welcome to the Enlightenment Philosophers. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, this time period that we call the Enlightenment, sometimes called the Age of Reason. Now, the Enlightenment refers to a period of new thinking among many educated Europeans that began in the late 1600s. This new outlook, in other words, how they're seeing the world, put a great emphasis on reason as the key to human progress. Now, when you see this word enlightenment, what do you see? What word do you see within it? The word light, you see right here, light. And what does a light do? It helps you see more clearly. So this is the idea of the enlightenment. Now, the people we're gonna talk about are Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, Montesquieu, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and Voltaire. And a lot of what we're talking about here is what was their ideas of our rights versus the government, okay? Now, during this time period, you had an absolute monarchy. Absolute, right? What does absolute means? They had complete power. They had power over the people. The will of their people was not listened to, but instead it was always the will of the king. Now, First guy that comes along is Thomas Hobbes. And what he says about people are that we're kind of evil and we're really selfish. Therefore, we needed an absolute monarch to kind of be this uh, uh, omnipotent ruler, someone to do the things for us because we can't do for ourselves, just tear ourselves apart, right? Um, kind of think about his idea is that we needed this kind of parent type government, this absolute monarch who makes sure that people are on the right track because the monarch is the guy that knows best. But then John Locke came along and he was like, no, 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 no. There are only three things that the government should be doing, and that is protecting our life, our liberty, and our property. Now, what does he mean by that? He thinks we have these things called natural rights, that we are born, of course, obviously, with our life, and it should be protected, protected from harm, protected from death. We have our liberty or our freedom. The government's job is to make sure that our freedom is taken care of and to make sure, three, that our property is whether that means land, whether you're talking about the things that you own, that that is the government's job, is to protect. Or here, listen to this, to lock up, like that, get it, John Locke, lock up your basic rights, okay? So that's what John Locke came around, this idea of natural rights. Another guy that came in was Montesquieu. And what Montesquieu said, okay, look, 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 John Locke's right. These three things are important, but he was worried about the government becoming too powerful. And he was like, so what we need to do is we need to make sure there are a separation of powers. In other words, just like the government that we have today, that the executive branch, C the E, should be separated from the legislative branch, which should be separated from the judicial branch. Right, So you have the executive. This is like your president, your prime minister, whatever it may be. Um, then you have the legislative branch. And the legislative branch is like our Congress today. And they're the ones that actually make the laws. And then the judicial branch are the ones that interpret. Okay, This idea of separations of power was to make sure each could keep each other in check, what they call checks and balances. Okay, The idea that the executive legislative nor judicial be, could become too powerful because the other two branches would keep them in check and balance power. Again. Now, the next person we're talking about here is Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Uh, and what he talked about was this idea of a social contract. And what this meant is that the government had a contract with the people. Okay, and uh, if we think in the real world, if we think about a contract, you may uh, sign a contract 
sport, like a sports athlete says that they'll make X amount of money per year, but they have to do certain amount of things to uh, get that money. This is kind of similar in the idea that the government and the people are in a social contract. And Rousseau said that if the government was not doing the will of the people, then the people had the right to break that contract. That's where you get the word social from, right? From the people. So again, Rousseau's talking about how the government is really just a reflection of the people and their desires and needs. And that again, if the government did not meet its part to represent the people, that this social contract could be broken. Now, then we have Voltaire. Now, Voltaire believed in this idea of the separation of church and state. Now, what he was saying is, is that you should have religious freedom and that the government shouldn't dictate what that religion is or tell you what to believe or not to believe. Now, um, his idea was that this would promote tolerance. The idea of tolerance is that, you know, you be you, I'll be me, right? That we have an understanding for each other. Um, and really during this time period, what they were afraid of was because kings were making people be a certain form of Christianity, um, whether it was Protestant or Catholic or uh, the Anglican church, which one of the kings actually starts his own church within Christianity. But the idea was that Voltaire wanted to keep the church and the state separate. And again, because he was, more than anything, he was worried about uh, the king's forcing religion upon people. And this was, again, one of those ideas of these natural rights to liberty, right? When we talk, remember how Locke said something about liberty is your idea of freedom. So you should have freedom of religion and not have a government force its view upon you. Now, the biggest idea is from the Enlightenment when it came to governments is this would end up uh, inspiring the revolutions in the American colonies in 1776 and then in France in 1778. And these are things we're going to talk about this age of revolution uh, after the Enlightenment. But what I want you to see here is that whether we're talking about John Locke, Montesquieu, Rousseau or Voltaire, that these Enlightenment thinkers, this age of reason, or the age of Enlightenment, they truly believed that freedom was in the hands of the people, okay, and that government was merely a reflection of the people. And again, this is revolutionary. This is why it becomes revolutions, is because for the longest time, again, remember, you have the monarch, an absolute monarch, someone that, in their eyes, is appointed by God, and they pass that on to their children. There's no elections. There's nothing like that. It is just passed on and on through families. And that really goes against the Enlightenment and this idea of people's natural rights, their right to freedom, their right to choose, and their right to have property that is theirs and cannot be taken away. So I appreciate you tuning in here for our uh, tutoring on demand this month.